Welcome to Redbeard Radio. I'm Brian Keith, and today we are talking about getting things under control and how wonderful that is and how to do that, but also when to know when things are too under control and you get complacent and you start missing opportunities. We have back on the show Jerry Adams, who on episode 142, Why Grit Leads to Victory, talked to us about how to go develop grit. Jerry's new book is Men of Grit, Strong as Steel. And while it's aimed at people wanting to think about masculinity, we're going to go and take some of Jerry's ideas and we're going to apply it to our businesses and really understanding that balance between you want to get stuff under control, but also you want to be out of balance enough to go and get those opportunities, how to tell the difference and where to know what to work on. Jerry, welcome back to Redbeard Radio. You bet. Thank you, Brian. It's good to be back and I'm going to enjoy this conversation. So it's fun to have a new book out there in the world. Well, tell us about that, that you didn't have a book. This book's only been out there for a month. And at some point you decided that what you were doing that was under control was no longer appropriate. And you were going to go break all your systems, break how you organize your life, break your schedule, break your sleep and your travel schedule to go do this book and then go do a book tour. How did you decide that what you were doing was not enough? Well, for me, I went down a path that I think a lot of men go down and it leads to this thing that we're going to talk about, comfort and complacency. So I I would say for my journey, you know, I was going through life and I was checking off the list. I married the woman I wanted to marry. We bought the house that we wanted to buy. We started a family. You know, you drive the cars, you become successful in your career and you start making some money. And after a while, comfort starts to set in because I think, you know, a lot of times men, we come into life and we're very driven and we have this drive to go achieve all these things. We're driven. We find the woman that we want to marry and we're driven to pursue her. And then we get the girl. Then we decide, okay, it's time to have a a family. It's time to go out there and grab that house and build that career. And you really start pushing yourself into a lot of things. And then what I see happen and it happened to me. And, and as I started uh, relaying my story to other men, I realized it happens to a lot of men. You get to this point where you sit back and you start to think about seeking comfort. And so you start looking at life as, okay, I've tackled all these things. Now I'm comfortable. And that comfort leads to complacency. And that complacency, it really kills the masculine soul. And what I mean by that is a lot of that drive and all of those things starts to settle. And I think that's really bad for men. It was bad for me. And what happened to me is my physical life started to suffer. And then you you really start to figure out the connection between the physical and the mental and the spiritual. And you start to see that when you're not physically fit, that uh, you don't have the energy that you had before. And so things start to slip. My marriage started to slip. My relationship with my son wasn't what it needed to be because I wasn't being the example that I needed to be. That example is really important in business when you're leading a business, it's important to be the example, to make good, solid decisions. And when you're tired and you're out of shape and you start to lose that discipline, you start to lose that edge. And that's where that comfort leads to complacency. And that complacency starts to kill those things that made you successful in life. How do I know which area to look at complacency and say, this is bad. For example, I know what my ideal morning routine is. I know roughly when I get up, I know when I go to the gym, I know what I eat for breakfast. When you could look at that and you could say, Hey, I put my morning routine in a box. And when I follow the algorithm of my morning, my odds of having a good day go up. And when I don't follow my odds of having a good day go down. So I look at that and I'd say, hey, I'm pretty comfortable. And not that the experience is comfortable, but I'm pretty comfortable that I have a routine. I know the more often I follow this routine, the more often I win. I have something similar for bedtime. I already know the algorithm. Are you saying that having that algorithm for different parts of your life 
that that is what is too comfortable because I think I already know it's good? No, not necessarily. I think the comfort is the piece that starts to allow things. In other words, here's the mindset that I started to have that I think a lot of men have. You know, I put all this effort and energy into work. Yeah. I come home and I think I deserve to rest. Yeah. I worked hard, man. Of course I deserve to rest. Yes. And the family, though, the family needs me. When I walk through the door, my leadership, the only thing that happens is I just change hats. I just swap hats. For me, I take off the hard hat from the steel mill, running a steel mill. And now I put on the hat of the husband and the father, and I'm going to put my energy into those things. And so when you see these things in your life, they start to slip. That's the complacency that I'm talking about. It's what are the things that you value? And when you start to see those things slip, and what I found was, for me, was I wasn't a strong enough man across the board, body, mind, and spirit, to be the foundation that I needed to be to lead well. And that's where a lot of men find themselves, you know, When you're in that groove of chasing after the woman that you're going to marry and chasing after the career and all those things, you tend to, you tend to take care of a lot of those things because you know, they're essential to you being successful. But once you get those things, you kind of think, okay, I arrived. And that's the danger. I think the danger in life for us as men, and it can even be on the business side too, where you think okay, I've achieved a certain level of success. I've arrived. And how many times do you see businesses that collapse because they relax and they don't even see the competition coming because they've allowed this complacency to set in? And so for me, it's more about, you know, you talk about that routine and everything. Even in that routine, there can be comfort. Yeah. And after a while, you're like, you know, if you talk about workout, it's like you got to mix that workout up every once in a while. I am so guilty of having the things that if I don't feel like doing anything, I have the things that I already know exactly what to do. I know what what weights to use. There's no thinking involved. I even have a do this, then do that. I, I have the algorithm for the gym, which if I don't want to think, there's the default, right? And the default's not bad. I am at the gym, I am getting stronger, I am progressively loading, but it's still a default. And then I occasionally switched up and I don't know the names of all the technical gym things, but I went from a pulling a weight on a wire thing towards my face and then it switched to turning around and then pulling it from behind my head to in front of my head. And I'd cut the weight in half and I was sore for days because it turns out while I was doing this one style of lifting a lot and I was getting better and better at that, there was this other style that just kicked me in my butt right away. That's it. And, you know, I talk in my book, I have like four sections in the book, a foundation of fatherhood. I talk about the fire of faith. I talk about the fuel of fellowship. And then I talk about the forge of the daily grind. And each one of these, they start these sections with something about steelmaking. When you talk about forging, this is what we're talking about here. When you, when you forge a piece of steel, what you do is you heat it up and then you hit it with a hammer. And what you do is you take a piece of steel that's already strong, but when you heat it up and you hit it with the hammer, it makes that part of the steel even stronger than it was before. So it takes heat and pressure and pounding to make it even stronger. And for us as men, it's the same kind of thing. But but as you work that piece of steel, it only gets harder where you hit it. If there's a section of that steel that you don't hit, that's going to be one piece of that steel that's going to be weak compared to the rest of the steel. It's going to be weaker. So if there's going to be a failure in that piece of steel, it's going to occur in the place that was never pounded. So when you and I are talking about this, it's a great example. And that's why I use the forge of the daily grind because, and I talk about body, mind, and spirit because... As men, if we truly want to be strong, we need to hit all those areas and we need to mix it up and and we need to go after those weaknesses. We can't just keep going to that same exercise every day. We build that muscle, yes, but after a while, 
you've worked that muscle so much that that's no longer very difficult. It's not stress. It's not strain. We're not putting that, we're not forging that part of our body as much as what we were before. We need to mix it up. We need to get after those areas of our life that have weakness and we need to hit those so that we don't become comfortable and then start to go down that path of complacency again. And you can apply that to everything in your life, everything that you want to be strong at, everything you want to be good at, you know, your business or whatever that is. It's like we all gravitate. It's like you said about exercise. We all gravitate to things that we are comfortable with. And in business, it's a dangerous thing when we tend to gravitate to, I'm coming into my business day. There are things that need to get done. Some of those things I really enjoy doing. Others I dread doing. And when you are routinely in the habit of pushing yourself to doing hard things, difficult things, you don't shy away from those hard to do things that need to get done. And I think that's a big part of what it means to be a man is that you need to lean into those things because they somebody needs to do them. They need to get done. And if you think about it from the business standpoint, imagine if there are these issues that are negatively impacting your business that you don't enjoy doing and you don't do them. Who's going to do them? And what's the long-term impact to your business if it's not done? And so you start to drill this thing into your being where you are constantly pushing yourself into hard things so that you become stronger and stronger. And soon you actually get this mindset of going after the hard things. Because it's like, you realize that's what makes you strong. There's two questions that I ask myself sometimes when I'm looking at what am I going to do today at work? And one of the questions is, what do I want to do the least? And the other question is, what is the most important thing to do that if I only get that done today, it'll be an okay day? And of course, everyone listening already knows that 80% of the time, that's, it's the same thing. Yeah. And sometimes I meet that challenge and I say, okay. Roll up those sleeves. Let's do it. Let's go through. Let's pass through the thing that I really want to put off the most. And other days I think, okay, I need to do that, but I'll do this other thing first. And then reliably, I end up not getting to the other thing, which is not unlike going to the gym. I have had great intentions sometimes. Okay, I got this work thing. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go to the office immediately and get to work on this really important thing. I'll go to the gym later. The frequency of that to me actually going to the gym later, it's like 100 to 1. It just... It almost doesn't happen. It's not because they don't have good intentions. It's because unless I do the hard, annoying thing first, I'm probably going to not do it today. I'll put it off till tomorrow. Yeah. I talk about that in in my book. I write about that because I tell this story about a time where um, it was over the summer. And my dad went to work and he would leave us jobs to do. And he and he left this job for me to mow the grass. And we had a little farm and we had a lot of grass. And at the time, it, all we had was a push mower. <laughs> I would mow part of the, the grass. My brother would mow another part of the grass. And, and over a couple days, it would take us a couple days to finish it. Well, he assigned me to mow the grass this one day. Well, it, it's funny. It sounds just like what you said. I got tied up into things that I wanted to do. And... Before I knew it, my dad came home and he walked up to me and he said, son, you didn't mow the grass. And I was like, yeah, and I really didn't even have an excuse. He turned around, he went out to our barn, he filled up the mower with gas, started it. He didn't go in the house. He had worked hard all day. He never went in the house. He never ate dinner. He never sat down, never rested. He mowed the grass and I went to him and said, dad, look, I I can mow it. And he's like, nope, I got it. And he mowed the grass. He said, go in and eat. And so I'm in the house eating, enjoying my dinner. And I can hear this lawnmower running (laughs) and it killed me. I disappointed my dad. It just killed me. And I remember 
my dad, he taught us this lesson on the farm. He said, boys, he said, we do the work first. We get the work done and then you can go do whatever you want to do, but we get the work done. What's interesting about that is I remember that story and that lesson stuck with me throughout life. And when I went through When I kind of got off track and then it was time to get back on track, which is a lot of what I talk about in the book, I remember those kinds of lessons from my dad and that came out of that foundation of fatherhood. And that lesson for me was do the hard things first. And I've adopted that throughout my life and especially in my career as a leader. If I go into work and I have a personnel issue that nobody really wants to deal with, I go into work, I set that up, I put that on the calendar first thing. I get it done as soon as I can. All of the things that I dread doing, I try to get those done as soon as I can. I don't let them drag. And I push myself in to the hard things. And and in my opinion, what I've learned over the years is the difference between people that hold a position of leadership and those that are great leaders is that the great leaders do the hard things. They lean in and they do the things that nobody else wants to do that really needs to be done. And um, those are the things that really distinguish the people that hold a leadership position versus those that truly lead, in my opinion. And it all goes back to a lesson that my dad taught me on the farm. And that was get the work done first, do the hard thing first. And then enjoy the rest of your day. And I'm still that way today, even if I got a project on the weekend. I still wake up in the morning and I'm like, I'm going to get the work done. And then, hey, maybe I sit by the fire and enjoy a good cigar. But it's going to be after I get the work done. Inspiring words, Jerry. I went ahead and bought the book as we were talking here. Folks, the book is on Amazon and everywhere. Men of Grit, Strong as Steel, How to Build a Legacy of Unbreakable Strength. If you believe that... The books you read changes your brain by changing who you perceive to be your peer group. And you think having Jerry in the peer group in your head would be a good idea. Go ahead and get Men of Grit. You can also find everywhere to find Jerry on social media at menofgrit.com. Jerry, where do you publish most often on social media? Most of the time I'm on Twitter. So men underscore of underscore grit. And I have the same at Instagram. So mostly on Twitter, uh, secondly on Instagram, and then my website, as you mentioned, menofgrit.com. My book is on Amazon now. If people read it and they like it, give me a good review. Those reviews really help boost it out into the world. So appreciate that. Beautiful. Jerry, thanks for coming back on Redbeard Radio. You bet. You're welcome. Thank you.